SOP will explain the various types of calorimeters, what they can be used for, and how to use them properly. Calorimeters are used to measure the heat and physical changes during a chemical reaction. The two most common types of calorimeters are coffee cup calorimeters and bob calorimeters. The calorimeter was first invented by Benjamin Thompson at the end of the 18th century. Calorimeters use the equation Q equals MC delta T to calculate the gain or loss of heat. M is the mass of water, C is the constant joule per gram degree Celsius, and delta T is the change in temperature. A bomb calorimeter is used to determine the heat exchange in combustion reactions. This device is a setup of two closed chambers inside one another with water in between the two chambers. The innermost chamber ignites the substance inside, causing it to combust. A temperature reader displays the temperature of the reaction. In coffee cup calorimetry, a styrofoam coffee cup and lid are used along with a thermometer to determine the amount of heat gained or lost in the system. The styrofoam cup as well as the lid are used to help lower the amount of heat exchange from the substance inside the cup to the outside environment. When a chemical reaction occurs inside the closed environment, the heat released by the reaction is absorbed by the water, thus increasing the temperature of the water. This energy exchange is measured by the increase in temperature and then used to calculate the energy present in the reaction. If total heat gained by the system in the reaction is positive, then it is an exothermic reaction, as the water absorbed energy. When the overall temperature of the reaction is lowered, the water has supplied heat to the reaction, making an endothermic reaction. This level of calorimetry is used in more basic and elementary labs. The process of using a bomb calorimeter can be followed by any scientifically trained professional adult in a lab setting. The process of using a coffee cup calorimeter can be followed by anyone of high school age or older in a lab setting and under proper supervision. The materials needed for this procedure are two styrofoam coffee cups, distilled water, a lid, a thermometer, a stir, a reaction mixture, a graduate cylinder, and an electronic temperature probe. For both of the calorimeters, safety glasses must be worn at all times using these devices. The use of this equipment involves a potential interaction with hot liquids. The correct precautions must be taken to avoid the hot liquid spilling on yourself or anyone else. This is especially important when working with chemical reactions inside the calorimeter. All of the aspects of the two calorimeters must be thoroughly checked, especially the bomb calorimeter, to ensure that none of the parts will malfunction and lead to serious injury. A tight seal is especially important to ensure that as much heat as possible from the reaction is maintained within the closed Using an electronic balance, measure the mass of your sample, the mass of the water added to the calorimeter, and the mass of the dry cup. Using room temperature distilled water, measure out 100 milliliters of water for use in your coffee cup calorimeter. Using a thermometer, measure and record the initial temperature of the water. When given a chemical sample, place it into the calorimeter and measure the temperature changes by way of an electronic temperature probe and record using a computing system or manually in an Excel document. Make sure to stir and swirl the sample until the reaction is complete, which can be determined by plateauing temperature reading. The highest temperature recorded by the temperature probe can be regarded as the final temperature. Due to the simplicity of a coffee cup calorimeter, the cleanup process will not be difficult. First, remove the thermometer, stir, and insulate the stopper from the calorimeter to reuse in later experiments. Then, pour the water in the outer coffee cup down the drain. This is not toxic and so will not be harmful. The two styrofoam cups and the remains of the reaction, providing they are not toxic, should be thrown in the garbage. If the remains within the calorimeter are toxic, however, they should be disposed of appropriately. Finally, clean up any chemical or waste or water waste outside of the calorimeter or on the table or left out following the experiment. Clean up all remaining objects.